what is up guys my name is Hassan and welcome back everyone today I'm going to show you guys my Robinhood portfolio which you guys can see right here and the unique companies that I'm invested in the dividends I received and we're going to show you guys my monthly tracking sheet and at the end we're also going to show you guys as a investor how we vote for the company now I want to talk about the coronavirus because everyone seemed to have forgotten about it as you guys know I'm from New York City and the coronavirus is still very real it's still out there one of the websites that I track the coronavirus we can see USA New York California one thing that I want to show you guys is that you can see California this is yesterday's data they had a 6500 new cases Texas another 5000 Florida another 3000 so in those three states we can see we are seeing a massive growth in new cases so this is one of the worst things that happen is that for us to receive a second wave so as a person who's from New York City I want to focus on New York so we're going to click on New York we can see here New York has a total of 400,000 cases 31,000 deaths and 87,000 recovered so if we scroll down so for New York City or for New York we can see the daily new cases in New York peaked right here we're getting near May and June we can see that the daily cases in New York has been declining which is a very positive sign also that this chart right here shows us the daily debts in New York we can same thing it peaked everybody was concerned about the market the overall health as it decreases less and less people are getting a better understanding of this virus people are doing opening up their shops but one thing that we want to keep in mind is that like I said in the beginning those three states we don't want to be like them as an individual we need to continue to maintain our social distance wash our hands wear our masks everywhere we go as always before we continue I have to give you guys a quick disclaimer I'm not a financial advisor nor do I know you personally I'm not responsible for any of your gains or losses in the stock market. My suggestions are only suggestions. That does not mean you go out and buy these stocks. And also another thing is that I'm not an Islamic scholar to certify if certain companies are halal or haram, meaning if they're permissible or impermissible to invest in these companies. My suggestions are just a place for you to start your own due diligence. Another disclaimer that I want to put out there is that all the information that I present to you guys are not mine. I get them from other people, other videos, books, articles, newspapers, magazines, a lot of reading, a lot of research. The only thing that might be mine is my experience and my emotion. So it's really important that you guys do your own due diligence before you put your hard earned money in there. So let's get started. This is my Robinhood profile is currently at $21,400 you can see that this is real money and not a paper trading account and on the right you can see these are my holdings that I have so we're gonna go through them near the end of the video so if we look at it so usually with my portfolio I, I try not to look at the one day and one week because it really doesn't matter I'm a long-term investor where I care about long-term trend of the market or the long term trend of my portfolio so we're just gonna skip one day and one week we're gonna go directly to one month we can see for one month my portfolio is up around 7.5 percent or in other words almost fifteen hundred dollars if we look at three months I'm up about thirty percent and then if we look at for one year I'm up about four and a half percent even though you, th you might think that this four four and a half percent is not a lot to me it's actually a lot because I also get three percent in dividend payment so even though it's four and a half percent we add three percent to this so I'm technically at around seven and a half percent for the year which is actually lower than average or lower than the S&P 500 but my goal is not to be a to beat the market is actually for income if we look at our all time I'm around at six percent but as time was going every single month I've been collecting dividends month after month another thing that I want to point out here is that we see a huge major dip here buying a lot of shares and then another dip here recently that which I, I was able to acquire a lot more shares if you take a look at my portfolio they have they all have one thing in common majority of them pay a dividend I'm about to drop some gems so this is why you need to like and subscribe so if you look at my top two holdings we can see here Baozong and AMD they're actually not a dividend company even the majority of my portfolio is a dividend company I'm going to explain why these two my top two holdings is not if you look at the stock market history you might see value investing doing really well for three years and then awful for the next six years during that six years 
it actually has a shift where growth companies are doing really well. The market changes back and forth. Since 1926, emerging growth stocks have outperformed the S&P 500 by a substantial margin. As Peter Lynch said, it is always a good idea to keep something invested here in the growth stocks. That's why if we look at my portfolio, the market changes. So a few years, it'll be value investing, dividend companies. The next six years or five years, it'll be growth and it'll go back and forth. So it's always really good to have one or two companies that are growth stocks. And that's the main reason why I have these two holdings. So in that way, if growth stocks are booming, I will still gain some of those profits along the way. And I'm all about being transparent. I'm all about being held accountable. You can see that this is my S&P 500 for the year. I'm only up about 4.5%. If I add 3% in dividend, I'm only up about 7.5%. So now we're going to take a look at the S&P 500, how it has been doing in the last one year. So we're going to take this date and we're going to stretch it out. We can see that here the S&P 500 is actually up around 6 6.3%. And then if you add the average dividend payment for the S&P 500, which is around 2%, we get about almost 8.5% or 8.3%, while my portfolio was only doing around 7 So it's by 1% or less, it's lagging the S&P 500. Remember, as I said, that my goal is not to beat the S&P 500. It is only to mirror it or at least, at least use it as a source of income. Now I want to show you guys my monthly dividend chart so this is how i track my dividends from month to month so we're gonna see we're gonna go with the last few months we're gonna start with november 2019 in november i got 23 dollars december 42 dollars 19 dollars february 25 and then march 51 and then april i received 27 dollars so i'm going to add the previous month for may i received $34.83. And you can see that here, this is how I track my dividends. Dividend portfolio is increasing month after month. Yes, it's like a mountainous, but for the long run, it's up. So one of the viewers asked me a question on how do I actually put this trend trend line on this? So we're going to go to edit chart, customization, series, and then here we're going to click on the trend line. And this trend line, it shows us our overall trend of my income or the monthly dividends that i have been receiving month after month so the next thing that i want to show you guys is the average so if we take the average of the last six or seven months i get about 33 dollars and 47 so if we look at it for the last year and a half i received about 356 dollars in cash dividend payments so as you guys know that I have two portfolios i have the m1 finance portfolio and then i have my robin hood portfolio so for my m1 finance portfolio i got i got twenty dollars and eighty two cents for my robin hood portfolio i got thirty four dollars and eighty three cents so if we add my m1 finance portfolio and my robin hood portfolio for the month of may i received about fifty five dollars and sixty five cents so now one of my goal is to receive by the end of this year is to receive hundred dollars in dividend payments for currently we haven't reached that yet because i'm only at fifty five dollars for my electricity bill i pay about forty dollars and then my gas bill is around on a monthly basis around twenty five dollars my internet bill is $45 and then for my cell phone is around $95 so if we look at the total cost or total bills for the month of May is around $205 and we can see that my investments income from my investments is at $55 so and my 205 minus my utilities is negative $149 so currently I'm not able to live off my dividends you can see that here in December, I start off with 200, negative 205, 190, 159, 104, 146, and then May, it's negative 149 and 35 cents. So if we extrapolate this number, eventually, if we keep going month after month, eventually I should reach it zero and then go in surplus in my investments where my investments are able to cover my or at least substitute some of my income where my investments will be able to pay some of my expenses so one of the reasons why i'm showing you guys my monthly expense 
is that if we continue to put money in our stocks, eventually it will do way better than a savings account. Even if we need the income right now to pay bills, we should figure out a way to invest because in the long run, dividend paying stocks will do far better than anything else. And it is okay if we need to dip into this capital as a substitute income. Now I want to show you guys the monthly dividends I received for the month of May. So May, early on May from Foot Locker, I received around $5.60. And then we got Colgate, which paid me about $0.44. Cents. MMP paid me $8.22. Texas Instrument, $9. Pambina, $5.14. And then we got Pet Med around five dollars and then we got spsk which is like a islamic sukuk bond which paid me 20 cents this is actually a monthly dividend pambina is also a monthly dividend so for the month of may we received the dividend payments from seven companies which add up to around around $34.83. So before I show you guys my holding, let's take a quick question. And the question is by Dow. What do you think about value investing in emerging markets? I am thinking about investing in these markets. Can you share your experience? So emerging markets, I have very little experience. I did invest in. I did invest in China and Brazil and I did pretty well. If you are going to invest in emerging market, I would suggest you go with well-established big name companies and you should be fine. You should stay away from smaller unknown companies. Just be careful of these markets because there is a lot of corruption and lack of legal protection. Either way, make sure you get your valuation correct before you invest. Take a look at what happened to Japan. People were investing at these high valuation companies and then the crash came and they got stuck holding the company for 20 to 30 years because it never rebounded. Another thing that if you are going to invest, I would just I would just suggest buying an ETF. I hope I was able to answer your question. Now I do have a question for you. And my question is that have you ran out of options in the United States? Why are you looking at emerging markets when we have so many good companies, high growth companies that is going to do well? Guys, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you guys subscribe and like the video. As always, thank you. See you next time.